I'm really stepping on my game. These bitches gotta start paying me for this. Can't get no more free, Randy. Everyone enjoys company. Family company, friend company, lady company, whatever. No one likes or wants to be lonely. But I do know this. Sometimes... Sam, I'm just... I don't think you heard my You'd rather be alone. Genetro Alpha, take two, Mark. Broken Code is a story about two brothers who are raised by their grandfather who's head of the mafia and through a series of events the grandfather's killed and the boys go on a journey to find out who the killers are. All the fucking money we got and you still putting that shit up your nose? Jesus fucking Christ. You ever heard of Low Key? Let me tell you something about Low Key. Low Key is not tailor-made motherfucking suits. Low-key is not bags of fucking cocaine. Real smart, Einstein. Okay, doctor. Josh and I found Masali's the location by literally just driving by, hungry, you know, just hustling, trying to like figure out how we're gonna do it, where's the next scene gonna be, how we're gonna get it. And we thought it looked good, I mean, because it was it had the Italian colors, you could tell it was an Italian restaurant, that's what we needed for the film, because it represented like our family and stuff. And uh, we just went in there, had some soup, um, spoke to the, one of the owners, I think, is, I think we spoke to Charlie, his name was Charlie, and he uh, was like the manager, and we told him our story, we are like, hey, you know, we're shooting this like Italian-oriented, like mafia kind of style film, we need this, what can you do? They gave us like a little price, small little like contract, and it worked out. And we ended up meeting the owners, and they supported it. And there should be a poster in their restaurant there now. <laughs> do me a big favor. I want you to clean up this mess and close up the restaurant. Gino, can you do that for me? Do that for me, please. Yeah, no, no, I could do that. All right, you're a good boy. There'll be something in it for you. A nice present. All right. That Michelle's night shoot was a nightmare. Uh, we were told to be on set at a certain time. We were, but being that it's a restaurant, we had to wait until some of the late dinner guests had to leave before we could go in and use the thing. And lo and behold, I didn't realize that I had to change. Josh would tell me, okay, you gotta be this now. Go dress this, this is this day. Okay, so I'd go out to the car, grab whatever I had to grab. And of course, we don't have any star you know, trailers. I had to use the bathroom. So there in the bathroom, me and another guy were changing or whatever. <laughs> it was hilarious. Back and forth, and we did it. Yeah, it was uh, six times. Yeah, it, it was a circus. Who's this for? Uh, this for the cops? Yeah. Get it out of here. The other, one of my other favorite parts of the movie is my. Uh, it's actually my my kill scene, and uh, you know they got me they get me on the toilet bowl, and you know squeezing out a nice one, <laughs> and uh, they come busted in, guns blazing. This is for my grandfather. <laughs> cool scene to shoot. I never been never had a, a death scene before, and we use a lot of blood and fake blood, and it's you know it's interesting. Josh still owes me a shirt. So this is so disgusting, and. and Erotic at the same time. Okay. It, oh, Jesus okay, okay, Christ, okay, okay, dude. Go, go, go. Just, just speak, speak. Go. <laughs> Josh owes me a shirt because we had to, uh, we had to desecrate the shirt I had with fake blood, and uh, it was easy to just throw it away. Mm. Yes, sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> trust me, trust me. Trust Come on, me. dude. Wait, yeah, yeah, wait. What are you doing? You going through my fucking phone? What are the girls you're talking to, Calm, I'm huh? not talking to any fucking girls. You think girls. you're fucking stupid, Calm, huh? Who the fuck's Sam? And Jessica? 
never said we were exclusive. One of my favorite scenes in the film was actually the scene where I get beat up. It was the first time I've learned how to work with blood, which was really interesting. Fake blood. You know, it, it looks so much easier when it's when the film's done, but when you're actually doing it, everything is so technical. You know, the punch comes at the right time, you, you fall back at the right time, um, the blood comes out at the right time. The makeup was very interesting, I sat very long for makeup. But it was all exciting, and, and the finished product's really fantastic. What I'm saying is, you've got a moment, a moment in time, and you don't want to lose it by getting angry or feeling sorry for yourself. That's too easy. What I'm saying is that you need, you need to find the courage to move toward the pain you're feeling, not run away from it. One of my favorite scenes, my favorite memory, would be uh, when I did the scene with uh, Bill, and it was late at night, and the weather was probably 20 below, but we somehow pulled it off. I need to know if I can rely on Carmelo to make the right choices. Now, when I was seven, my mom told me not to hang around you and Frank anymore. She said that the both of you are going to end up in jail sooner or later. The next day, this guy comes over with this shiny badge. And she tells me to tell him everything that I know about you and Frank. He says to me, make the right choice, son. I didn't understand at the time, so I told him. And Frank went away for a very long time. Oh, favorite memory of shooting the movie? Few memories. Uh, one, uh, this movie took about two and a half years to film. Always coming back, seeing everybody, it was always great. Getting right back into the character. Second favorite memory was definitely the night that we had to shoot in the garage. Matthew, how you doing? You uh, spoke to my father, right? If your father speaks and you go boom, then oh yeah, we talked. We actually had to shoot the scene two different times at two different points and in, in, uh, during the year. Uh, the character that we received the guns from just was this wacko crazy guy and he just played his part perfectly and it was just a hard time keeping a straight face every time he did his little bird thing that he had going on. Your Easter baskets are right over there! Guys, put that down. Look, just go get, go get them, man. Right. Batshit crazy. Put it down. Wait, really? Yes. This is my dad's friend. Put that down. Show I'm some respect. Kidding. Fucking batshit crazy. Bat I ain't ending up a body in the basement, all right? The hotel scene with Kate and Carm was very interesting. At that point, we didn't really have any budget whatsoever. You know, we were at the end of the road, end of our money stream, and uh, we needed a location. We we wanted like a swanky type of. You know, because Carm is supposed to be rich at this point, he's supposed to have all of his grandfather's money. So my my father was actually in town visiting, and uh, and I convinced him, oh, give me four hours, you know, go take a walk somewhere, walk on Rodeo Drive or whatever, and uh, and let us get in there and shoot this movie. <laughs> I had to sniff a lot of fake coke for the movie, like too much. Like I, I don't think there'll be anything down the road that'll like mess with me internally or anything like that. But uh, I just remember a lot of like scenes and nights where like Josh was like again, again, and I'm just like, oh, what are you talking about? We got this shot. He's like, no, come on, again, again. I didn't even fucking do it. Oh, yeah, you did. <laughs> okay, let's go. Hold on, hold on a second. It's, I think it's just again. because of, like my no, nostrils not. Yeah. It's like. Let's try it. <laughs> if you got I mean, to, just one. hold this up. Just hold it up, okay? I, I, you know, I just kept telling Mike to keep sniffing more and more cocaine because I felt like that played a lot to his character and the choices that he was making and this, that, the next thing. I could tell that, you know, he wasn't, uh, he wasn't really enjoying it. But for the sake of it, I was like, you know what? Let's get another angle. We'll do another sniff of cocaine. See how it go down? Go down low. Okay, I'll still catch you, okay? Yeah. So it'll be fine. All right. So make sure you sniff it this time. Yeah, I'll try. All right, and action. <sighs> you 
you talk too much. My first feelings when the boat flipped was, uh, nah, it, it, was, it was, I guess, overall concern, you know. I didn't know the guys that long, but still it was like, uh, you know, just concern for like, you know, are they okay? And then they were, and then, you know, I know Mike was, Mike was laid up for a little bit. The thoughts that were going through my head when I was in the hospital was hopefully I can get in here and get out before I had to call my parents. Because I didn't know really how serious it was until they did all the tests and like x-rays. Two minutes prior to us flipping that boat, I remember sitting there, it was a beautiful overcast day. We were driving on the boat, we're zooming, and I'm looking up at the overcast and I'm praying to God, I'm saying, thank you God for giving us the ability to finish this movie. We had a great day of filming on the boat. Appreciate everything, and literally two, two minutes afterwards, I can remember looking down, before you know it, boom. The boat was in the air, we were floating. I, I just remember thinking, when am I gonna die? When am I gonna die? Josh came every day to see me, made sure I was straight, brought me stuff, you know. He was shooken up by it, even just seeing me there, especially witnessing and just from how we met to shooting the film to then almost losing everything and then just sitting at the hospital bed looking at me like, oh man, we really messed up. I mean, well, we didn't, though. it wasn't our fault, but at the same time we knew that there were some struggles that were gonna be ahead of us and some serious like hills to climb and conquer. It was something I'll take with me for the rest of my life. You know, I, I never in my wildest dreams would have imagined that we would have flipped that boat. And I never w would have imagined that we would have lost the footage that we lost and the equipment and Mike getting injured. Um, but it's, uh, to be honest, I, I feel in life everything happens for a reason. Well, where can I help? Because I need to, if we have to redo stuff, I'll be happy to do it, you know? And we did. We were able to do it. Josh and Mike sat down, planned it all out, and we were able to uh, recreate some of them. But then, as an afterthought, we made other scenes that became better, which added quality to the film. Ultimately made us uh, greater in, in life in general to know that, you know, sometimes you just got to pick it up and keep moving. But then we had to end up reshooting, the, you know, another 15, 20 scenes. One of them in particular that runs through my head is the first time we did the funeral scene in the film, we had a uh, we had a church, and we told them we told them that we were allowed that we were like a student film, and we were we wanted to like shoot in the church, and uh, and they they said yeah cool come on back it's cool, and we got we got a, a bunch of extras that day we got like 30, 40 different extras that day, and um, and to be honest I thought I said man you did a great job we didn't pay those people they just came and they kind of hung out and. And that was that. My reaction when Josh and I was at the funeral scene waiting for the extras was like, man, we did it. But before that, it was like a scramble between me and him. Like, man, you think you're gonna come? What's going on? I don't know, man, this is, we need these people to make it. Well, what if only 10 people come? We'll, we'll trick the camera, we'll go in a tree and figure it out and make it look like 200 people. But I just remember there was a moment where Josh and I were sitting there like running around scrambling, trying to set up that when we literally turned around and it was like a sea of people in suits in like this daytime public park walking towards us. So it was it was great because the first funeral scene was garbage in comparison. Like I said, only 20 people showed up, the camera guy did shaky work, and then when we had to redo it, like 200 people showed up for free, ready. It was great. It was probably one of the best feelings as casting directors, Josh Weber and Michael DeGente. <laughs> Our Father, Lord, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil forever and ever. Amen. To anybody at home watching the movie, I just want to say thank you for buying the DVD or watching the DVD. Um, it was a hell of a journey, you know, it took us about three years to get to this point and I'm just happy that we completed and, and succeeded. And, 
you know, pass it on, tell a friend, you know, maybe write us a message, you know, send us an email, to write on our Facebook wall, Twitter, and uh, there'll be more to come. Thank you. I want to say to anyone and everyone who has purchased the movie or has seen it, thank you. Um, it was a hell of a process for it. I hope you enjoy it. Please tell a friend. I promise there's going to be a lot more great things coming from us. And buy it as a gift. Everyone needs it. Put it in everyone's little DVD.